the show really grows on you. Hello, welcome to Just My Thoughts. I'm your host, Khalil Ward. On this episode, I'll be talking about The Orbital Children. It's a Netflix anime. It's only six episodes. They're like 30 minutes each. It was a slow start because I was I was wondering what kind of like anime this would be. And it's more of a, a storytelling anime. It's not a bunch of fighting or anything like that. Um, it's about these kids who survive this accident that takes place on a space station. So humanity... You know, they their intelligence has grown and they are focused on AI, as in most cases, when we get to the future, we focus on AI. Um, so humans are now living on the moon or trying to live on the moon. And this one particular kid, Toya, he's like the last kid born on the moon because the, the kids weren't surviving on the moon. And humanity had this AI called Seven. You know, the, it gradually got smarter. Think of it as Skynet from Terminator, you know, when it gets too smart and it's self-aware. So Seven got that smart, but it, but along the way, it was helping humanity and developing stuff and designing different things. And it helped design this implant for Toya and this other child that was on the moon. And they were able to survive. As Seven went rogue, it, it got destroyed. And then, you know, they came up with other ones, eight, nine. Now they're on 12. And 12 is not as smart as Seven because seven end up becoming like a lunatic so these humans are visiting the space station where toya is and the the humans they aren't anything special one girl mina she is like a youtuber for this particular show i forgot what they call it but she's all about trying to get followers she has her little brother who's like the nerd and wants to ask toya all these questions about you know being a moon kid and all that then you have this other guy who is he works for the un it's called UN2, you know, because they had the regular UN. Now they have UN2. And he's like a, a white hacker. He can hack different droids and stuff. Uh, Toya has this droid um, that he keeps with him. And he's been on. He's been like hacking into it because it has like a limiter. And think of it as like certain things, certain access you can get. So his has certain access he, get, he can get to. So he just takes it off gradually because he's trying to get things. Toya doesn't really like humans because humans didn't really like them. You know, the moon kids and everything. He can't go to Earth. He can't survive on Earth because of the gravity and everything. So he doesn't really have a relationship with Earthlings. You know, he's been on, you know, in that space station his whole life. You know, him and the other young lady. And then there's this woman named NASA. I know nasa houston works for nasa is weird but she's been taking care of the kids the entire time and toy is like 14 years old so the the story is just when the humans get there and they are you know being walked around and introduced to toya toya doesn't like them he's like all right you earthlings i hate y'all i want y'all to die and then an accident happens and it knocks out power to the space station and they all have to start working together and that's what the the show is about it's about kids learning to trust each other and finding a way out of a situation but as the episodes go on it gets deeper it's like a deeper meaning in each episode about humanity and humankind and ai and like how humans sometimes don't know what they are or what they want to do and they need something to help them along the way and that's why the ai seven tried to do more than he was programmed to do and, and eventually turned into like a skynet self-thinking type of machine and the last few episodes i was like this is really good it's deep you know it's a sci-fi anime it's not any fighting there's conflict of, of people you know not agreeing on certain things a lot of the, the the people there look to toya because he's he's been there the longest he knows everything about the space station so they they have to they have to move around and you know trust each other to survive uh there's also this this comet but it's not a regular comet that's going for earth it's like an ai controlled comet and they, they break it down in the show about how it became an ai controlled comet and they're trying to make sure the comet doesn't go destroy earth because it wants to eliminate like one third of the human population it it's it's crazy like it's really intense the last few episodes and you're like i I didn't expect to enjoy this show as much as I did, you know, going into it. Cause I said, like I said, that first episode is a little, a little slow. And you're like, what, what are we about to get into? And I, I enjoyed it, you know, six episodes, 30 minutes. It was, 
it was an easy watch. After that first episode, I was I was drawn into it, you know, with the story and the whole sci-fi aspect of the AI, you know, trying to take over things. Um, I had a good time. The Orbital Children is on Netflix. Uh, check it out if you don't mind an anime that doesn't have a bunch of blood and guts in it. Um, those are just my thoughts. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for 500 subscribers. Deuces.